Okay, okay. So creative warriors have always been frowned upon in the competitive Fortnite scene, right? While they've reigned supreme amongst casual circles, they've never been given credit amongst the pro community, mainly because creative skills don't usually translate well into real game environments. Recently though, hey, this has changed. The creative warrior is classy, stylish, and loves to impress people with all the extra stuff. But most of the time, they die to fall damage. There are some, however, that transfer these skills into regular games. And today, hey, we're going to be discussing a player who has the best of both worlds, Nova Whistles. You know, we read your comments on one of our previous videos and decided to take a look at this player to see if he's really as good as you guys say he is. We're going to be going through some of his gameplay and analyzing him to see what makes him such an effective controller player. And remember guys to check out ProGuys.com to find out how you can improve your skills in creative and arena. Because these days, hey, Fortnite pros need both to stand out. Hey, once again, this is Keith Allen, your guy. Hey, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to connect with me yet on my Instagram, I would love to talk to you. So hey, drop me a message, connect with me. We got a lot of stuff going on. So the first thing we notice about Whistles is that he is very confident, which is very important. I say this all the time, man. Confidence will take you a long way. Confidence, I, I really believe, separates you from just being an ordinary player to a great player. And that is the truth, guys. He isn't afraid to take fights. And, you know, unlike many controller players, he goes for shots. An impressive builder and a great shot are two terms I would use to describe this menace. You know, he's quite crafty when it comes to transferring his creative skills into regular games, and if I had to give him a fair case, I'd say that he got it down perfectly. For those of you who are still having doubts, check this out. Now let's head over to the analysis. Okay, so for this first clip, we're gonna be analyzing an in-game duel game he had with his teammate Pumper. He's gonna show us how to pop off and play aggressively in the end game. And hopefully, hey, you'll learn a thing or two. Then we're gonna jump right into his creative gameplay and analyze what makes him so dominant. To truly see the force behind his crazy moves is gonna be amazing. Whistles, in a late game circle with his teammate Pumper, he's got a very solid loadout and has the high ground. With ultimate height, he has free reign to shoot whoever he wants. Whistles positions himself very high up for a reason, and it's gonna pay off in just a second. Okay, so check it out, here's the payoff. He sees an enemy above his teammate and is quick to drop down and destroy him, saving his ally. Whistles is in a 2v2 fight and is the first to spread his opponent. So after doing some significant damage, he makes the push. He doesn't have to worry much about getting pinched or sprayed because the enemies are now on the low ground. As Whistles pushes his opponent, the enemy is quick to counter Whistles with the cone. Now pay very close attention to what Whistles did in response here. Right as he's coned, he places his wall on the side. This is done to prevent being trap killed. So right after being coned by an enemy, his next move is most likely a follow-up trap kill. This technique is widely used among top tier players and doesn't have many counters. The few things you can do if you anticipate it fast enough is to break the cone quickly or edit out from the side. So, after he claims the wall, he's quick to edit out and save himself from a painful death. Whistles notices his enemies going for height and is very quick to follow up. As the guy ramps up, Whistles retaliates with a cone block. Now, remember what his enemy did to him earlier? Well, this is Whistles' payback. But instead of attempting a trap kill, he goes for the retake and claims the high ground with ease. He manages to get a trade shot off and ends up losing the high ground. Now with low HP and the low ground, Whistles sees a fierce rotating circle, so he decides not to commit to the fight. So Whistles instead decides to drop down and looks to isolate the last opponent. When he jumps down, he surprises the enemy. The final enemy jumps on him and he closes out the game with a beautiful, beautiful flintlock shot. Honestly guys, his teammate wasn't really much of use, <laughs> I think we all saw that. But Whistles got the victory single-handedly. So there are two things I want you to learn from Whistles play here. Number one, use pyramids or cones to block off the enemies when they go for hype. It's been a pro tactic for a while now, and I still don't see people using it. Side note, cones can also be used to protect yourself from being coned. Number two, hey, you know, we also saw how Whistles was quick to react when his enemy boxed him in. He took the wall quickly, and the enemy was forced to back away. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Nova Whistles versus Faye Sway. You guys ready for this? This analysis will cover in depth exactly how he closed the fights. All right, so please keep in mind, guys, that the end score was Whistles 10 to 8 Sway, but we're only going to cover a couple of them. 
In this next creative fight, Whistles is on the low ground most of the time. He wins through clever gameplay. A lot of people criticize creative build fights, but from the player's perspective, there's so much skill involved. From building placements to time shots, everything is calculated. Whistles' gameplay in particular is very careful, measured, and aggressive in style. We're gonna watch this clip through and then afterward go over important points of the fight. Okay, now let's go over some winning points that sealed him the deal. Nova starts off by spamming 90s, the best way to take height. He does end up messing up though, but this doesn't discourage him. He continues to go for the retake. Like competitive matches, guys, creative mode dominance is all about getting high ground. But he does make one mistake in this part. As he goes for the retake, he shot from behind. Ooh, This is the first error, but it could have cost him the game. Always, <laughs> always protect your side angles to make sure you don't get hit. Okay, so let's move on to the next important detail here. Sway dominates the high ground in this fight since it's very easy for him to stalk from above. This advantage can be detrimental to Whistles, so Whistles counters by going for a series of retakes while making sure to cover up his angles. Keep yourself protected, guys. If you build up in normal fashion, you are for sure to get hit from above. All right, so this is the turning point. Sway makes a foolish move and he drops down to the low ground. Whistles capitalizes on this and he's able to retake the high ground with ease. From this position, he just stalks from above, waiting to get a shot off. Don't ever give up high ground, guys, ever, unless you know you're going to get the shot. I know much of playground fights are for practice, but if you get used to doing it, you're going to end up doing it in the real games. Faceway makes yet another few foolish mistakes. He exposes himself to a chip shot and pushes aggressively. After hitting a nice chip shot, Sway counters him, but Whistles already knows his move. He's ready, so he counters with the wall, but Sway still gets above him. Sway's third mistake was that he knows Whistles has a deadly shot, but he edits down anyway after he's ready for him. Sway should have been more careful here. They trade shots and Sway goes all in. Unfortunately for him, Whistles times his shot and beats Sway in this fight. All right, so let's move on to our next clip. So just like in the previous fight, Whistles messes up his start, but instead of going for his retakes, he waits to see if he can get a shot off on Sway. You know, many top tier players resort to tracking their enemies from below. If you just build recklessly, it's going to be very easy for a good player to counter you. Whistle goes for a sweet low ground shot, which many of the top players do. Take note, every time Sway gets above Whistles, what does Whistles do? Whistles make sure to track him before going to make his high ground push. This is because he doesn't want to be too predictable. Again, we see another instance of a pre-aim shot. If this hit, it would have been lethal. 
many pro players resort to going for pre-aim shots, and even if they don't hit it, nothing is lost. Pros have a good idea of where the enemy will peek, and this helps them in the event they need to take a shot. So with Sway on the ultimate highs, Whistles is careful not to make an edit. From this angle, it's very easy for Sway to do some serious damage. So what does Whistles do? He walls Sway and goes for a series of edits. But hey, Sway's been playing creative since the start, so he's aware of all the tricks. After Whistles notices he can't fake Sway out, he goes for a retake. This time, hey, he doesn't forget to watch his blind spots. So as you can see, it's a very good habit he has here, and honestly, it's probably the reason he doesn't lose many build fights. Whistles always seems to go for these pre-aim shots, and he doesn't end up wasting time by placing builds as he's falling down. Many top pro players, when they build, you know, they incorporate chip damage, which is the most effective way to damage opponents. Whistles lands a beautiful 70 damage chip shot, and from here, ladies and gentlemen, Sway is on the defensive. Whistle lands a perfect ramp to block Sway off and is able to claim the high ground. After having height, Whistle makes a terrible decision. He goes for a shot without enough height. Sway reclaims high ground and Whistle loses his calm. Sway surprises him with a jump shot from behind and it goes downhill. With so much pressure, Whistle starts to panic and he makes the wrong play. <sighs> this cone is right above him and he has no way to get out and build around him fast enough. So, as he exits, he gets beamed by Sway, and it's the end for Whistles. Okay, so out of all the fantastic plays we saw in this clip, what did we learn? Number one, we saw how Whistles, despite being on the low ground, kept track of Sway from below. The height advantage Sway had didn't make a huge difference. Number two, we witnessed high-level pre-aim shots. Although he only hit one of them, this method is very good and it works wonders in real games. Take a shot where you think your enemy will pop out from. You never know who you might hit. Number three, we learn not to make impulsive plays and push out recklessly. As a lot of times after we make a bad decision, we can tilt, causing us to make irrational plays. All right, so that's it for the video, guys. Whistles is a highly talented player and great creative fighter. Overall, hey, I say I was impressed by his gameplay. Let us know which pro player you like us to analyze next, and you already know we're going to deliver. Once again, it's your guy, Keith Allen, and connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you. We got a lot going on at Pro Guides, and uh, stay tuned for more videos coming out.